Hi there, my name is Eric and I play bass and today we are checking out the Ampeg Venture V7 and the matching 210 cabinet. Before we get started with this video, Ampeg did send me this head and cabinet to check out and demo and feature here on my channel. However, I'm not getting paid to do this video and do this content. I'm not getting to keep the amp or the cabinet. It's going back to Ampeg. So uh, all thoughts and opinions voiced are entirely my own in this video. Uh, you can always argue that Oh, but you got to check it out, so you must say nice things about it. But I'm gonna try and be as uh, transparent and honest as possible in case you're in the market for this very base head and the cabinet that we're speaking of. In this video I'm using my Yamaha Attitude Limited 3 with a Lundgren Vintage P pickup. It's got Rotosome, Billy Sheen, Singing Strings and we're going through my Neural ESP Quad Cortex right now and uh, there is nothing going on there. There is no single processing going on. I've got a noise gate set up just for good measure but um, there is no you know effects or compression or anything going on. Everything that you hear is the Venture V7 and the 210 cabinet. I'm micing the cabinet up with my Shure SM7B and uh, as of now this is what this sounds like going straight to Logic. So I'm not using the XLR output on the back for this video, so you're not getting to hear that signal. Uh, in this case, I want to showcase the cabinet and not the DI output because there is no, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get to that as well, but there is no you know, IR loading possibilities or whatnot on the back. So uh, in my humble opinion, it's not that interesting to hear what's uh, going on there. So, uh, the Venture V7 is the 700 watt version of uh, the Venture heads. Uh, starting off here at the far, well, left, I guess you could say, you've got the input jack and you've got a minus 15 pad. Uh, these pickups are pretty, you know, standard output. However, if I change to the neck pickup, yeah, you can. Thanks. That's much better. So, uh, yeah, minus 15 dB pad there, which is always a nice feature to have. You've got uh, the compressor here going, so. Uh, together with the gain knob. It's uh, its own thing. I'm guessing that's the same circuit as in the SGT pedal, however, this one feels better, I think. I think. I think it feels better than the SGT DI version. It's probably the exact same circuit, but it feels, feels good. It's not a very aggressive one, so it's pretty much just... Yeah. So, compressor. Then we got the switches for the Super Grit technology, or the SGT. Uh, on off, you've got the SVT mode and the B15 mode. Here you've got the grit uh, amount, or gain, or what have you, and the level. And you've got the gain on for uh, the preamp section. 
you got the bass control, you got the mid and the sweep all mid frequency and treble controls, and you got the ultra lows and the ultra high. So, uh, I guess uh, we should start off by checking out the EQ. So, got the gain set for 12 o'clock, and uh, let's start off with the bass. So, here's everything at pretty much 12 o'clock. Let's go through the mid frequency real quicker. This speaks more of the cabinet rather than the EQ itself, uh, but I didn't find it too brittle. 
It's not too bad, actually. Uh, with the treble control. And I guess that speaks of uh, the voicing of the cabinet and the speakers rather than the EQ itself. I mean, through a more um, trebly uh, speaker, I guess you would get more of the ice pick action. But yeah, really like that. Uh, also worth mentioning is this switch. Which, you know, um, your significant other might want to know about. It's uh, the mute for, for the speaker, so... And nicely enough, it turns red when it's muted. So, you've got that. Um, let's go into some super grit uh, territory now. So, switching it on. Got the B50 down here. You got the level. You got the grit. to be regarded as a distortion in any ways. It's more of a tube elimination. Let's keep it somewhere around there for the B15. with a bit, shall we? That's a big one. type tone, in my humble opinion there. Um, <laughs> not much more to say, let's do it.
more honky. You know? Very nice. Uh, let's go for the SVT now. So there we go. Let's uh, set that one back. different voicing uh, compared to the B15. Really like this one as well. Um, but yeah, just going between these two. Really cool amp, and like I said, or like I said, you can. And if you're a pedal board guy or gal, and you don't want to use the SGT technology, you can always turn that one off and use, you know, external pedals and stuff. Uh, I've got a compressor and some V3K action here now, so going in a quad cortex. I'm just gonna tone shape that a bit now. So if you want more modern distortion, you should probably add something like that to this equation. So the Venture V7 uh, features a 700 watt Class D power amp, which is quite a lot. It will get you through uh, quite a few of your gigs, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to say. On the back, you've got an input jack for, the, for a foot switch if you want to engage and disengage the SGT technology, so if you want to use it more like, uh, say, an overdrive or uh, an additional flavor, you can do that uh, using a foot switch. It weighs uh, 6.3 pounds or 3.1 kilograms, if you're uh, more into, you know, kilos like 
I am. On the back panel, you've got a, a speaker output. Of course, you've got a phone's output. You've got an auxiliary input. You've got a preamp out, so in, in case you want to hook this one up to, say, a even more powerful power amp, you can use this as just your preamp and hook it up to uh, an additional power amp. You've got an effects loop. You've got a balanced DI output and you've got a power amp input in case you want to use this as just a power amp. So you can do that as well, which is cool. So with that being said, let's go through a few of my thoughts on this amp and this cabinet. First off, let me start by saying that I really, really enjoy the sound of this cabinet. It weighs close to nothing. Uh, I don't know how many kilos it was. I could probably look it up, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, you can look it up for yourself and be angry at me in the comments, but it's a really nice sounding 2x10 cabinet. Um, I recently saw some footage of the 8x8 uh, cabinet in the same series, and uh, yeah, I really like the punch that these cabs pack. Uh, it's currently standing on a small, you know, uh, pedestal, so to speak, to put it off the ground, and it's still got some really great bass response, in my humble opinion. Uh, as for the amp head itself, I mean, I really like how it sounds. I really enjoy the SGT, especially the, B, the B15 mode. I really like that, actually. those classic Ampeg tones, you can't go wrong with this uh, amp head, I must say. Uh, you got a great form factor, it will fit into your gig bag, you get, you got those classic Ampeg tones in this one, uh, and uh, it packs quite a lot of power with 700 watts at 4 ohms, so that's always great to have at a gig. However, there are a few cons that I would like to mention that uh, Ampeg hopefully will you know, take to their heart, or probably not, but hey, you never know. Uh, one of the key factors is that it's got an auxiliary input and not a Bluetooth connection. I find that Bluetooth is quite a key feature of uh, amps these days, especially, you know, amps like this that you don't need to hook up to an uh, external cabinet to actually use, uh, that you can actually use for, you know, silent practicing. And if you got a phone's output, why don't just feature a Bluetooth connection so that you can just pair it with your phone and, you know, don't spend time looking for the right adapters and cables and whatnot. So that is a, a minus in my book. Another uh, aspect that's pretty close to that is the fact that you don't got uh, an IR loader in this one, uh, or the option to add IRs to the balance output, I should say. Having the option to add your own IRs or factory IRs or what have you to the XLR output is quite a big key feature in my book. I know that quite a few people are uh, inclined to disagree on that one and go ahead, but to me that would have been a huge a vantage point for the Venture Series if they had the option to add IRs. Like on the SGT DI, why not just implement that technology into this one? I, I really don't get that, uh, why they didn't do that. And I mean, if you checked out the Ampeg suite, which is amazing, they could have, uh, I don't know, it, it's probably not easy, but they could have uh, featured the virtual cabinets that you got in the Ampeg suite for your uh, doll because those cabinets sound utterly amazing and if you had access to that say over bluetooth with uh, through an app this would have been a killer uh, amp head for the modern bass player at least in my humble opinion it still sounds amazing it sounds great it really does what it's supposed to do uh, however i really would have liked to seen that feature and the last feature is, it's a bit silly, but I feel that it should be mentioned. And that is the fact that you got the speak on NL2 jacks uh, on this one and not the NL4, which I think all of my other amp heads have. I don't know why they went with that. There is probably a good reason that I don't understand that it has to do with engineering and cool stuff that like that. I only play bass. I know nothing of cool. Uh, amp designing and you know stuff like that but 
I think that uh, it should be worth mentioning that if you're getting this one, make sure that you have an NL2 speak on cable uh, to hook it up because otherwise you're going to be uh, quiet and not be able to, I guess, perform with it. So there is that. So if you're looking for the classic MPEG tones, and you want a Class D amp head for your rig, I suggest you look no further than the Venture series because they sound great. And, you know, despite the cons that I mentioned, it's, it's a great amp. And uh, really glad that I got the chance to check this one out along with its uh, 210 uh, ca uh, cabinet uh, buddy. So with all this being said and done, my name is Eric and I play bass. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. And I'll see you guys and gals and cats and dogs in the next video. Until next time, take care. Bye.